Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on temperature measurement. Important physics concepts. Heat. Heat is the form of energy that passes between two samples owing to the difference in their temperatures. It is measured in joules. Heat energy flows from a substance of a higher temperature to a substance of a lower temperature. Heat capacity refers to the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of an object by 1 Kelvin, it is measured in joules per Kelvin. Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat in joules needed to raise the temperature of 1 kg of a specific object by 1 Kelvin. The unit is joules per kg per Kelvin. Temperature It is defined as a measure of mean kinetic energy of the molecules of a substance. When heat is applied to an object, the mean kinetic energy of its molecules increases and its temperature increases. When heat is removed from an object, the mean kinetic energy of its molecules decreases and its temperature decreases. Temperature is the property of matter that determines in which direction heat energy will flow when an object is in contact with another of a different temperature. Hot objects transfer heat energy to cooler objects. The rate of energy transfer depends on the temperature gradient and the thermal conductivity of the involved objects. Kelvin The old definition is 1 Kelvin equals 1 divided by 273.16 of the thermodynamic triple point of water. Triple point refers to the temperature and pressure at which all three phases of a substance, solid, liquid and gas, are in equilibrium. The triple point of water occurs at 0.01 .01 degrees Celsius and 611.73 Pa. The new definition of Kelvin, the 2018 General Conference on Weights and Measures decided that effective from May 20, 2019, 1 Kelvin would be defined such that the Boltzmann constant would equal to 1.380649 times 10 to the negative power 23 Joule per Kelvin. A change in temperature of 1 Kelvin is equal in magnitude to that of 1 degree Celsius. Celsius is also known as degree centigrade. It is a common measure of temperature in which a change in temperature of 1 degree Celsius is equal in magnitude to that of 1 Kelvin and negative 273.15 degrees Celsius equals 0 Kelvin. Latent heat Latent heat is the heat energy that is required for a material to undergo change of phase. It is measured in joules. Not all heat energy results in a temperature change. In order for a material to change phase, from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or solid to gas, some energy must be supplied to it to enable its component atoms to alter their arrangement. These same amounts of energy will be released into the surroundings when the change of phase is in the reverse direction. Specific latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required at a specified temperature to convert a unit mass of solid to liquid without temperature change. Specific latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat energy required at a specified temperature to convert a unit mass of liquid into vapor without temperature change. And specific latent heat of sublimation is the amount of heat energy required at a specified temperature to convert a unit mass of solid into vapor without temperature change. The four thermodynamic laws describes how heat energy and other forms of energy are related. The zeroth law of thermodynamic states that if two thermodynamic systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third system, they are all in thermal equilibrium with each other. The first law of thermodynamics states that in a closed system, the total quantity of energy remains constant as energy cannot be created or destroyed. For example, during shivering, chemical energy within muscles is converted to kinetic energy, which is converted to heat energy. The second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of the universe as a closed system will increase over time, where entropy refers to a measure of disorder within a closed system. The third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a perfectly crystalline compound is zero at absolute zero, i.e. there is no thermal energy existing at absolute zero. Thermometric properties refers to predictable changes in physical properties of a substance that occur with alterations in temperature. These properties are used in temperature measuring devices. They include change in volume of a liquid or solid, change in pressure of a fixed mass of gas, 
change in wavelength of light energy emitted, and change in electrical resistance and electromotive force with changes in temperature. Electrical methods for measuring temperature The thermistor Components A thermistor consists of a small bead of a semiconductor material such as a metal oxide of nickel, iron, copper, manganese or cobalt. These beads are robust and very small. They are mounted in a plastic or stainless steel probe that makes them mechanically robust and can be chemically sterilized. Thermistors are used in the tips of pulmonary artery flotation catheters and in arterial lines for thermal dilution measurements. This semiconductor material is incorporated into a Wheatstone bridge circuit. Mechanism of action of a thermistor The resistance of the semiconductor metal changes exponentially as the temperature rises. For a negative thermal conductivity thermistor, such as copper oxide or manganese oxide, electrical resistance decreases as temperature increases. For a positive thermal conductivity thermistor, such as barium titanate, the electrical resistance increases with temperature. The curve may be made linear by mathematical manipulation. The measured change in electrical resistance by using the Wheatstone bridge is used to measure changes in temperature. For further details regarding the Wheatstone bridge, kindly refer to the video on the principles of electricity. Advantages of the thermistor It is very accurate to plus minus 0.1 degrees Celsius. It can be made cheaply. It is effective from negative 90 degrees Celsius to 130 degrees Celsius. It is compact and has a rapid response time. Disadvantages of a thermistor The resistance changes over time. It suffers from calibration error and drift. Thermistors need to be stabilized as they age. Thermistors tend to be single-use devices. Exposure to high temperature affects their calibration and may damage the device. Thermocouple Components A thermocouple consists of two strips of dissimilar metals, 0.4 to 2 mm diameter, of different specific heat capacities and in contact from both ends. Copper and constantan junctions are commonly used. Thermocouple thermometers can be made into a very small device as each metal can be made into fine wires that come into contact at their ends. Another component is a galvanometer. Mechanism of action The Seebeck effect is a phenomenon that occurs when a small potential difference develops at the junction of two dissimilar metals that are joined, which is proportional to the temperature of the junction. When part of a metal conductor is heated, it expands and its density of electron falls. A concentration gradient for electrons across the junction occurs at the junction between the dissimilar metals. This is also known as the thermoelectric effect. This curve demonstrates the Seebeck effect with x-axis referring to temperature difference and y-axis measuring potential difference. The curve passes through the origin. No electrical potential is generated if there is no temperature difference between the two dissimilar metals. It then rises as a near-linear curve with increasing temperature difference resulting in increased potential difference. Signal amplification is often required as the output voltage is small, 0.04 to 0.06 millivolts per degree Celsius. When the thermocouple is used as a thermometer, the two dissimilar metals expand and contract to different degrees with changes in temperature, producing an electrical potential that is compared to a reference junction. Electrical potential produced is proportional to the temperature difference between the two junctions. One of the junctions forms the temperature probe. Another junction between the metals is necessary to complete an electrical circuit. Another temperature-dependent voltage will develop at this junction. This other junction is kept at a constant temperature and acts as a reference. Alternatively, this other junction is not kept at a constant temperature. Its temperature is measured separately by using a sensitive thermistor so that the temperature at the sensing junction can be calculated according to the potential produced. Advantages of thermocouples They are stable, accurate to plus minus 0.1 degrees Celsius, effective over the range of negative 250 to 1150 degrees Celsius. They are compact, 
and can be placed in catheters, probes, and hypodermic needles. They are cheap, has a rapid response time of 0.1 milliseconds. It can be made into a thermal pile, which consists of multiple thermal couples linked in a series to increase its sensitivity. Disadvantages Thermal couples are prone to electrical noise and may require a second thermometer to measure the temperature at the reference junction. Resistance thermometer Mechanism of action Platinum is used with a Wheatstone bridge circuit. The flow of electrons is impeded when heating of the wire occurs as the molecules within the wire become agitated. This graph illustrates electrical resistance in metals increasing linearly with temperature, with x-axis being temperature and y-axis measuring resistance in ohms. The curve does not pass through the origin. The relationship is essentially linear over commonly measured ranges. The slope of the graph is very slightly positive. A Wheatstone bridge is used to increase sensitivity and detect the change in resistance. Advantages of resistance thermometers they are highly accurate, they are precise, not prone to drift, and effective over the range of negative 180 degrees Celsius to 1150 degrees Celsius. Resistance thermometers are very sensitive and able to detect changes as small as 0.0001 degrees Celsius. However, resistance thermometers are not used clinically as they are fragile, large, and has a slow response time of up to 50 seconds. Non-electrical methods for measuring temperature Liquid thermometers It consists of a glass bulb of liquid mercury or alcohol connected to a tube. Mechanism of action They are based on the principle that volume increases as temperature increases. Heating causes liquid expansion along the tube and this allows temperature to be read from a scale. These thermometers are calibrated against fixed points such as the triple point and boiling point of water. The triple point of water occurs at 0 0.01 degrees Celsius and 611.73 pascals. Liquid thermometers are commonly used to measure temperature sublingually, rectally, or within limb skin folds, such as the axilla and the groin. Mercury thermometer. The space above the mercury may be filled with nitrogen gas or it may be a partial vacuum. The temperature range is typically negative 39 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius the temperature range depends on the design. Alcohol thermometers. They are less toxic than mercury and will evaporate quickly if broken. The alcohol used could be ethanol, toluene, kerosene, or isoamyl acetate. The ethanol version is commonplace. Red or blue dye is added for visibility as alcohol is transparent. The space above the liquid is a mixture of nitrogen and the vapor of the liquid. Measurement temperature range is highly dependent upon the type of alcohol used. A typical range would be negative 117 Celsius to 78 degrees Celsius. Advantages Liquid thermometers does not require a power supply. They are cheap, portable and reusable. Disadvantages They are fragile. Contamination and mercury poisoning can be caused by breakage. Response time is slow, 2-3 to three minutes. Risk of cross-infection occurs if they are not disinfected properly. Liquid Crystal Thermometers Mechanism of Action They consist of layers of phospholipid crystals sandwiched between sheets of plastic. A twisted pneumatic phase is formed by each layer of phospholipid crystals orientated to lie at a different angle to the next. This reflects light at a specific wavelength. Changes in temperature changes the spacing of the crystals and reflection of different wavelengths of light and color change of the device occurs. Liquid crystal thermometers are used to measure temperature on the skin of the forehead. Advantages They are inexpensive, disposable, portable, accurate within plus minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, effective from 0 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius, response time is 1 minute. Disadvantages They fail to reflect core temperature accurately in situations of peripheral vessel constriction, Liquid crystal thermometers are unsuitable at extremes of physiological temperature as the measurement range is typically 32 to 40 degrees Celsius for compact design versions. Infrared thermometers may be tympanic membrane infrared thermometers or non-contact 
forehead infrared thermometers. Components A probe, which is small size to fit the external auditory meters for the tympanic membrane version. They have a disposable and transparent cover. The detector is the pyroelectric sensor. Mechanism of action Infrared thermometers detect wavelengths of thermal radiation emitted by objects and converts this into a temperature reading. The living body emits infrared radiation. The intensity and wavelength of infrared radiation varies with temperature. This property is utilized in tympanic membrane and non-contact thermometers. A lens focuses infrared radiation onto a pyroelectric sensor, which comprises of an electrically polarized substance whose polarization alters with temperature. Pyroelectric sensors are used to detect infrared radiation. Infrared radiation detected is converted into an electrical signal that is processed to measure temperature. The rate of radiation by an object is proportional to temperature to the fourth power. Advantages They have a rapid response time of 1 second, effective from negative 50 to 1050 degrees Celsius. They are non-invasive and accurate to plus minus 0 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius. Disadvantages Accuracy is affected by ambient radiation, which may be due to earwax or the user of the device. Infrared thermometers provides non-continuous intermittent readings. The probe has to be accurately aimed at the desired target, or false low readings can occur. Improper use can traumatize the ear canal or tympanic membrane. Non-contact forehead infrared thermometers work on the same principles of the tympanic membrane infrared thermometer as discussed previously. Bimetallic strip thermometers Components They consist of a coil comprising two metals with differential coefficients of expansion, such as steel and copper. Mechanism of action As temperature rises, copper expands at a greater rate than steel, as copper has a greater thermal expansion coefficient than steel, causing the strip to bend. The coil tightens or relaxes as the temperature changes. The attached lever then moves across a calibrated dial to indicate the temperature. Advantages Bimetallic strip thermometers are effective from negative 40 to 500 degrees Celsius. They are simple, accurate, and robust. Bimetallic strip serves as a role in temperature compensation in devices such as vaporizers. Kindly refer to the video on vaporizers for further details. Disadvantages Bimetallic strip thermometers are relatively insensitive to small temperature changes and are not used to measure temperature in clinical practice. Broaden gauge thermometer Components They consist of a fixed volume reservoir of gas connected to a borden pressure gauge. Mechanism of action When the gas reservoir is heated, pressure within the container rises proportionally, which can be read off the borden gauge scale. For mechanism of action of the borden pressure gauge, kindly refer to the video on the anesthetic machine. The pressure reading on the borden pressure gauge is calibrated to give a temperature reading. Advantages they are effective from negative 270 degrees Celsius to 1500 degrees Celsius. They are cheap and robust and easily read. Disadvantages They are not very accurate and prone to calibration errors. Sites of body temperature measurement Measurement of core body temperature is the single best indicator of thermal status in humans. Core body temperature represents the temperature of the deep thoracic, abdominal, and central nervous system tissues, which is normally 37 degrees Celsius plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. Sites that accurately reflect core body temperature includes distal esophageal, nasopharyngeal, tympanic membrane, bladder, and pulmonary artery temperature. Sites that does not accurately reflect core body temperature includes rectal, skin, and sublingual temperatures. Distal esophageal temperature accurately reflects the core temperature with the probe position in the lower 25% of the esophagus inserted to approximately 40 cm from the nest at the level of the left atrium. 
The temperature probe is not affected by the cooler tracheal temperature at this location. The upper esophagus is cooled by inspired gases and temperature there is unreliable. Core temperature should be measured by an esophageal probe whenever possible. It is low risk, low cost and provides the most accurate assessment of thermal status and most accurate for large changes in temperature. However, measurement of distal esophageal temperature may be difficult in regional or monitored anesthesia cases in conscious patients. Nasopharyngeal temperature is measured by inserting the temperature probe to approximately 10 cm from the nest to lie just behind the soft palate. The tympanic membrane temperature is closely associated with brain temperature. Compared with lower esophageal temperature, tympanic membrane temperature reflects core temperature as well. Thermocouple, thermistor or infrared probes can be used to measure tympanic membrane temperature. However, tympanic membrane temperature is prone to error due to earwax or measurement of the ear canal temperature instead of that of the tympanum. Bladder temperature correlates well with core temperature if there is normal urine output. However, during low urine output, bladder temperature does not reflect core body temperature and approximates rectal temperature. Pulmonary artery temperature Components and features of the pulmonary artery catheter It is 110 cm in length, 5 to 6 times longer than a central venous catheter. The outside diameter is 2.3 mm, about 7 French. It has two internal channels. One channel emerges at the tip of the catheter and the other channel emerges 30 cm proximal to the catheter tip and should be situated in the right atrium when the catheter is properly positioned. The tip of the catheter has an inflatable balloon of 1.5 mL capacity. This balloon helps to carry the catheter to its final destination. A small thermistor is placed near the tip of the catheter which allows measurement of cardiac output by the thermal dilution method. The balloon flotation principle. When the small balloon at the distal end of a PA catheter is inflated, the balloon allows the flow of venous blood to carry the catheter through the right side of the heart and into one of the pulmonary arteries. This allows catheterization of the right heart and pulmonary arteries without fluoroscopic guidance. Sites that does not accurately reflect core body temperature Rectal temperature does not accurately reflect the core temperature in anesthetized patients. Changes in temperature are relatively rapid and rectal temperature lags behind during an operation. Rectal temperatures tend to be slightly higher than core temperature due to local heat generation by gut flora. Skin temperature is measured at the axilla, forehead or toe. Measurement of skin temperature is more commonly used during regional anesthesia and in conscious patients. Advantages When measured with core temperature, the difference with skin temperature can be useful in determining the volumic status of the patient. The axilla is the best location for monitoring muscle temperature, making it more suitable for detecting malignant hyperthermia. Skin temperature is easy to obtain and more acceptable in conscious patients. Disadvantages Skin temperature does not accurately reflect core temperature. Skin temperature is affected by external influences such as ambient temperature and thermal regulatory functions such as regional skin blood flow of the body. Liquid crystal temperature strip applied to the forehead is inexpensive, non-invasive and easy to use. These strips give a reasonable reflection of core temperatures if adjusted with an appropriate offset such as 0.5 degrees Celsius for awake adults and 1 degree Celsius for anesthetized adults. However, forehead temperature is unreliable for detecting malignant hyperthermia. Sublingual temperatures are more commonly used during regional anesthesia and in conscious patients. They are easy to obtain and more acceptable to conscious patients. However, they are affected by ambient temperature and regional blood flow. The body site chosen for temperature measurement depends on accuracy, reliability and acceptability. For conscious patients, for example under regional anesthesia, due to acceptability issues, many of the sites used for body temperature measurement are less invasive, less reliable and provide only an indirect estimate of core temperature. If a temperature reading is questionable, an alternative technology should be used. 
Oral temperature is most commonly used for adults. Oral or axillary temperature is used for pediatric patients. And axillary measurements are often used for neonates, for conscious patients. For unconscious patients, for example under general anesthesia, techniques that measure core body temperature should be used, which should be accurate to within plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. Core temperature should be measured by an esophageal probe whenever possible. Oral temperature best approximates core as a near-core measure. The same modality of temperature measurement should be used throughout the peri-anesthesia period for comparison purposes. Extreme values should be interpreted with caution, such as below 35 or more than 39 degrees Celsius from any site with near-core instruments. These are my references. Thank you.